wonderful guys he's going to have as guests today. Thank you for sharing the morning. I'm Bob Allison. Rob and I will see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. This is WNZK, Dearborn Heights, Detroit. Your ethnic superstation at 690 days, 680 nights. WNZK has available a few good hours of airtime for a few good programs to serve their communities. Radio is better than ever in targeting an audience that listens to what you say. Learn more about this exciting radio broadcasting opportunity by calling WNZK Radio at 248-557-3500. Welcome to the Bright Side of Aging. My name is Ike Engelbaum. I'm a pharmacist and the publisher of AmericanSeniorGazette.org. It has been wisely said, you cannot help getting older, but you can help getting old. It has also been said that age is a matter of the mind. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. My purpose in doing this show is so that seniors and caregivers can share their ideas and questions on how we can age gracefully and in a vertical position for as long as our good genes will allow. And if we've inherited bad genes, how to outwit them. Our topics include senior housing, financial, legal, safety, travel, health issues, interesting senior events in the community, and most of all, tips on how to put old on hold. If you are diabetic, I am sure you have been warned by your doctor about the circulation problems that may occur, especially in your legs and your feet. That is why Medicare still pays for a free new pair of shoes if you're diabetic. And also, there's a system called neuropathy that may settle in that can be treated by a non-invasive system best described as the anodyne therapy. Call 1-888-489-8980 and find out how your leg circulation could be possibly improved by the anodyne therapy. Anodyne therapy is in a non-invasive way of producing warmth in your legs and is applied by a professional and in the convenience of your home or a nearby office. That's 1-888-489-8980. And if you'd like a free brochure on how Medicare can help you as a diabetic patient, Many services are available for free. Call 1-888-489-8980. Do you know someone who needs to see a dentist but is homebound? Dr. Mansour's Portable Dental Services provides dental treatment in the comfort of a person's home. Portable Dental Services administers all aspects of dental care. To make an appointment, call 586 873 Five five six seven. That's Portable Dental Services. Five eight six eight seven three five five six seven. Portable Dental Services, making smiles at home. And welcome. And I'm really excited about having both a friend and a very professional individual in the office with me today. Her name is Lisa Chaplin. Uh, Lisa Chaplin is a program coordinator at Maple Grove Community Education Center. And she's a social worker, and she's also been specially certified as far as dealing with alcohol and drugs. Is that correct, Lisa Yes, Chaplin? I'm a certified advanced alcohol and drug counselor. All right, it's a very fancy-dancy title. I... Uh, no social workers usually, uh, as the name implies, uh, they're involved in the social aspects of people's lives. Can you tell me, becoming a certified advanced alcohol and drug counselor, what the education entails? Is yes. So all of the therapists at Maple Grove Center and in other 
programs that require a master's degree therapist, we are required to get a, an additional credential called a Certified Advanced Alcohol and Drug Counselor, also known as CAADC. This means that every two years we get continuing education credits to maintain the credential and initially have to pass a test. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, how long is the training? Uh the programs, I believe we have 40 hours every two years mm -hmm. of additional training after passing the test and getting certified. Now, where is Maple Grove Education Center located? Okay, so Maple Grove Center is the Henry Ford Health System Chemical Dependency Program located in West Bloomfield, Michigan, on the same campus as the Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital. We're located in a different building west of the hospital. Oh, you're in the same building where... Uh, Right in that fancy dancy hospital, is that right? Or we're, you, we're not in the same it? building, we're on the same campus. Ah, so I our see. building is to the west of the hospital, set back where you can't see it from the road. Ah, but uh, the community education program is in that building. I see. Well, I, it's a very impressive facility. In fact, uh, I've had some of our meetings from the Rotary and the Optimist Club inside. It's a beautiful, beautiful hospital setup. It's almost like a resort. <laughs> <laughs> it is gorgeous. Anybody who has not been there should come and take a look and come have lunch in the cafeteria, right. which is like the healthiest and nicest food court you've ever seen. Oh, it's absolutely magnificent. It's right on uh, Maple, uh, just west of Drake Road on the south side. Uh, and it's just uh, really an upbeat experience, believe it or not, to walk into a hospital. They got mm -hmm. sort of uh, really a complete uh, array of uh, retail places and what have you. So then you're set behind that. Uh, so uh, 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 give me a little overview as to uh, someone that uh, goes to Maple Grove. What's the protocol to get in? Uh, they obviously have to be referred by a psychiatrist, I assume? How does it no. work? Anybody can self-refer or be referred by anybody else. So they have to call our front desk, our 248-661-6100 number. They're, they'll uh, follow the prompts to the central intake. They'll go through a screening over the phone to determine if they're eligible for services. And the screening people will determine if they're appropriate for inpatient or outpatient. If a person is appropriate for inpatient, they'll be, the screening will be completed, they'll be offered an admissions date, and then they'll come in, and we offer detoxification services and stabilization um, in addition to didactic education, recreational therapy, group therapy, individual and family therapy. We are, we're very big on the 12-step program, so our patients will be involved in um, meetings that are brought into Maple Grove from the community and it's a very comprehensive program. If they're appropriate for outpatient, then they'll usually undergo an evaluation or a screening and then start our intensive outpatient program, which is three hours a day, three days per week for six weeks. And we also have an adolescent intensive outpatient program for teens ages 13 to 18. And that program is similar to the adult, three hours a day, three days a week for six weeks, but the parents are required to come two days a week and get education and um, psychoeducational support. Now, as far as the uh, inpatient program, uh, how many can you house? They stay on campus, obviously, in yes. house, right? Yes. Yeah, so it's inpatient. Mm -hmm. They don't. They stay, you know, overnight for several days. Our average length of stay is between four and fourteen days, but some people stay longer, and it's driven by many different factors, including medical necessity, insurance coverage, ability to private pay, um, level of motivation. And so um, our patients have an opportunity to stay for as long as they need to. So then if a, a family member is dealing with someone that is uh, addicted, they themselves can initiate Ad, uh, having the patient admitted, you, they do not need a doctor's uh, uh, referral by prescription? Okay, no, they do not need a doctor's referral. However, a family member initiating the admission is not going to change anything. The patient has to want to come. 
So the patient needs to make the phone call unless they're physically incapable and go through the screening. What happens often is that family members want them to come and the patient's not interested. So how's that going to work? They have to admit themselves and sign themselves in and if they don't want treatment, that's not going to happen. So it's really on the, the lap of the patient yes. whether y you proceed. Is that correct? Yes, it's voluntary. We don't, for it, we don't accept court orders. We don't accept anybody being forced in. It's a voluntary program. And voluntary admission means they can also leave at any time unless they're a danger to themselves or others, in which case we would take action. No, I don't want to complicate things, but I hear so many times a judge will say, well, here's, you have to get uh, uh, some sort of program, get involved with a program. Mm -hmm. That order itself is not enough for you to admit the patient. The patient themselves has to say, I'm going to go ahead. Okay, good question. The order is between the judge and the patient. The patient has a choice, either go to treatment or go to jail. Mm -hmm. Okay, oftentimes they pick treatment. If they pick treatment, then they make the referral for themselves. They make the call and they get themselves in. Now, oftentimes the judge will say you have to stay for 30 days. Okay, that's between them and the judge. We don't require anybody to stay for 30 days. Mm -hmm. That patient could choose to leave after three days. That's up to them. I see. So we're not involved in the court order part of it. I see. Well, you know, uh, there's always a lot of confusion about whether someone is just uh, dependent on drugs uh, versus addiction. How uh, do you evaluate as a family member, hey, this, this person is really addicted? What is the difference in your opinion of addiction versus dependency? Okay, so like you and I could have surgery and be prescribed some type of pain medication and be on it for a while and now we're dependent on it. But that doesn't mean that we have addict-like behaviors that go along with it. We're not buying it off the street, stealing it from our family, shopping around at different doctors and pharmacies to see how we can get it. Um, it's not overtaking our lives in such a way that we're getting fired from our jobs or we're, um, you know, going out on, you know, leaving home and not coming home or getting arrested or driving under the influence. Those types of things are indicative of addiction. Um, so anybody can be dependent on a drug, but, it go, but the addiction is also the psychological component, mm -hmm. where the cravings, the, the urges, the desire for more, and well, the escalating, the increased tolerance. Yeah, well, you know, what's interesting is, you may know I'm a pharmacist, and uh, at one of our conventions, uh, the presenter said that the easiest way to determine addiction versus dependency is that if someone will go to the point like you brought out and commit crime or even kill to mm -hmm. get on the drug, then they're addicted. Uh, I mean, theoretically, it may sound, hey, that sounds right. Uh, have you found uh, over the years when someone is uh, dependent versus addicted as to the treatment, as to, is it any different or is it, how does that work if okay. it does? <laughs> okay, so if a patient needs detoxification, it's all the same. It just means in a medically supervised environment, getting the drug out of their body. So someone who is dependent can go through that process and be done and never pick up again and go on in their life in a productive way. But someone who is truly addicted needs more than just detox. They need ongoing treatment. They need to learn coping skills and relapse prevention skills. And that's, that's a different type of treatment than the person who just needs to be detoxed. Uh, you know, uh, I was just thinking about how... Uh, Alcoholics Anonymous is, has, has that 12 step program. Is the drug addiction program similar to that? Uh, can you describe what's involved? Yes, so Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous are both 12 step programs for the addicted person to um, assist them in living a clean and sober life. They work the steps with a sponsor to overcome their addiction. There's also programming for family members called Al-Anon or Naranon, 
And there's also Families Anonymous for family members to get the same type of help because this is a family disease and it's very challenging for family members. So these 12-step programs help everybody. And we are very 12-step based at Maple Grove. I see. Well, there's so much more I'd like to know in regards to uh, once they go through the program, what's the follow-up and the possibility of their, unfortunately, getting back on drugs. And I'd like to discuss that when we get back from our break with Lisa Chaplin, who is the program coordinator at Maple Grove Community Education right beside, behind Ford Hospital in West Bloomfield. And if someone is interested, their phone number direct is 248-661-6100. And, of course, we always have our safety phone number, 888-489-8980. And when we get back from our break, we'll be talking with Lisa about drugs. Don't you dare go away. If your question is, who am I going to call to bring the kind of services into my home that I need because I can't get out? House Calls on Wheels provides both medical and non-medical services in your home. They can bring in doctors, dentists, nurses, therapists, and more. And those medical services are covered by Medicare and most private insurance plans. And they have all sorts of of non-medical services, whatever you need. Now, if you use four hours or more of non-medical services per month, you're going to get a free personal emergency button telephone that you can use for both emergencies or daily use. Call House Calls on Wheels toll-free for further information. one 489 That's one 888 Four eight nine eight nine eight zero. Do you know someone who needs to see a dentist but is homebound? Dr. Mansour's Portable Dental Services provides dental treatment in the comfort of a person's home. Portable Dental Services administers all aspects of dental care. To make an appointment, call 586-873-5567. That's Portable Dental Services, 586-873-5567. Portable Dental Services, making smiles at home. And we're back, and Lisa Chaplin is in studio with me, and uh, hopefully uh, you are able to get a new vision of what can be done with all the drug-addicting type problems that we're having in our society today. Uh, this is a pet peeve of mine, uh, how they've romanticized drugs in the movies and all. certainly doesn't help the cause. And uh, Lisa Chaplin, uh, because of her experience, uh, also has been trained as a certified uh, alcohol counselor and uh, and your title is advanced, is that right? Certified yes. advanced. Yes, because I have a master's degree. <laughs> and you have a master's degree. Uh, so then, as far as the program that you work with at Maple Grove, I just wondered, uh, uh, can you share with us, what are the most common type of issues that patients come to see you about? Okay, so everybody comes in because of a negative consequence. Nobody decides to stop using when nothing has gone wrong in their life. So oftentimes they've been arrested, they've had family problems, been fired from a job, overdosed, had an accident or injury because of their use. Um, so the patients who come in primarily um, have issues with alcohol. Many have drug issues and many have both. And alcohol is a drug. Okay, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't understand that. So we're seeing a lot of opiates, that's the pain medications that you hear about, and opiate use often leads to heroin. So we're seeing more and more of that as time goes on, and not just in young people. We're seeing people who are, you know, 40s and 50s, 60s with heroin issues as well. So anybody can become addicted to anything at any time. 
It's just part of being human. It's an equal opportunity disease, and it is a disease, Ike. Many people think it's a character weakness or character flaw, and it is not. It is truly a disease that any of us can have, just like we can all have cancer or heart disease. How much stress uh, actually uh, is, uh, maybe stress might be the wrong word, uh, how, how much uh, uh, how many uh, the efforts in terms of preventing? Uh, how do you feel about the whole aspect of, hey, let's not only deal with the problems that people have once they're addicted, how do you suggest prevention could be uh, intervened in that whole process? Okay, that's a really good question. Of course, we'd rather prevent a problem from happening than treat it after it's happened. So the, our government has spent a lot of money on prevention programs. In Oakland County, Michigan, we have 19 drug prevention coalitions, which are local groups that attract anybody who's interested in doing prevention programming to help our communities be safer for youth and others. In West Bloomfield schools, we have a program called Kids in Charge, which is an elementary school substance abuse education program that has been ongoing now for 27 years. So other communities do other activities, but you are right. The, um, the way to deal with this disease is to prevent it in the first place. Now, uh, have you found that there's, uh, you said kids in prevention, unfortunately, uh, there are a lot of addicting type personalities that are not kids anymore. Mm -hmm. Is there an ongoing program all across the age spectrum that you know of? That's a, an excellent question as well. In high school health classes, they do a unit on substance abuse. And beyond that, no, not that I'm familiar with. So oftentimes, people don't really know what they're getting into. They don't understand that if they have a family history of addiction and they start using, they could very likely become addicted themselves. But even without a family history, people who have mental illness or childhood trauma or stress in their lives or live in an environment where th their social group is using, all of those people are also at high risk. People may not necessarily know that. Now, you and I could have high risk factors as well, and the drug doesn't grab us the way it grabs an addict. Okay, so some people can become addicted very quickly, completely unintentionally, and have an addiction on their hands that they now have to deal with. And as you know, it's a chronic illness, so once you have it, you always have it, even if you're clean and sober for the next 40 years. So it's something that people have to deal with forever. And now uh, I was just wondering, as far as uh, there is no magic formula for almost any complicated problem like addiction, uh, what would you suggest that would be uh, a real step forward in cutting back on all the addiction and dependency we have today? So I think the best thing is prevention if we don't have access to prevention or if it's not effective, then having treatment funds available for anybody who wants it the moment they decide that they're ready. So that means not putting them on a waiting list, not having um, to go through a, a program where they um, you know, have to wait. I would get them into treatment right away when they're ready. And then, of course, the quality of the treatment is important as well. But more important than that is the willingness of the patient. Mm -hmm. So um, g helping them to um, get, get motivated and see that there is help out there and using the new, uh, the up-and-coming um, support of peer recovery coaches helps people who have recovered from addiction themselves and they're assigned to an addict and help them work their recovery process. That's very helpful. And medication-assisted treatment is also the up-and-coming area of medicine where people are given medication to help them to get off and stay off the drugs. The medication addresses cravings and urges to use. And addictionology is the new up-and-coming area of medicine where addictionologists are people who are specifically trained to diagnose and treat addictive disorders. Hmm. So Tell all of that would help to deal yeah. with this. Uh, tell me, speaking of help, what are your thoughts 
I mean, I keep hearing about these rehab programs in schools and what have you. Have churches ever taken the step forward to get involved? Because I would think that would be really a good resource to, to reach people that, you know, were they are not in the school system anymore. So churches often host 12-step meetings, and they also, many people, if they have a problem, who's the first person they're going to? It might be their pastor, might be their minister, their rabbi, whomever it may be, um, for help. So we do, we have done programming to educate the clergy, as you know, in West Bloomfield, about what services are available. But the clergy generally have training in dealing with this disorder and getting people into help. So do you welcome calls from churches uh, so, uh, to p possibly facilitate the process? Yes, mm -hmm. in our community yeah. education department, we get calls from all walks of life. Yesterday I got a call from a doctor in Montana wanting help for somebody locally. So yes, they can also call the 248-661-6100 number and ask to talk to someone in the community education department and we will guide them. So then you could like train the trainer, is that doable? I do that as well, yes. Right, because I would think there's only so many hours a day and so many human beings available to uh, be productive that I would think a church setting or so any Anyone that's affiliated with the church, uh, by all means, uh, you might want to call and see what you can initiate. They're always looking for programs to reach out to their members, and like you brought out, uh, pastors and various clergy are usually the first that the uh, congregant is going to approach. So uh, uh, have you uh, actually done any seminars for clergy? I know there's... Yes. So that really uh, works well. Yes. Now, uh, I'm not sure whether I asked you, how many residents can you accommodate out at the Maple Grove oh. in the patient? Yeah, that's a good question because we are currently doing construction up on our patient's unit. We are building a longer-term inpatient program. So I'm, I'm guessing we can probably house around 40 right now, but it will be more than that at that time. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we should talk about is that Maple Grove has free family programs on Tuesday and Thursday evenings for family members of patients or the general community to come in and take skill building classes and join a family support group. Oh, wow. S skill building yeah. are six different sessions that rotate that teach family members what they need to learn about addiction. And our family support group is where family members literally share their experiences with one another and help each other. So it's sort of a support group as well, is that yes. correct? Open to the public. If you, Even if you've never had a patient at Maple Grove, they don't register, they don't pay, they just come. And uh, what time is it, on Tuesdays and Thursdays? Yes, 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock p.m. Mm -hmm. And there's no charge to no attend? No charge. I would think relatives of uh, members of families that the parents are uh, overwhelmed could possibly also benefit from I think that's fantastic. Yes, yes because uh, what we want to teach family members is how to deal with this disease and not enable the use to continue and to help themselves because there is nothing more stressful in life than having an addict right. in your family. Uh, tell me at these uh, sessions, uh, do you discuss hands-on, so to mm -hmm. speak, strategies? It's one thing to sh shrug your shoulders and what have you uh, as to, hey, this is what's what yes. you can do at the initiation. Is that correct? Yes. We talk about what works and what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And we give people the support to try new things, try new skills in handling the situation. Right. Well, gee, Lisa Chaplin, it's been a real educational experience for me. And I'm really impressed uh, with uh, the way you present a major problem. Uh, and I uh, guess me that's the advantage you have because you're certified advanced. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, advancing has helped alcohol and drugs. Uh, I uh, uh, never like to leave this section of our show without my favorite thought. It is the bright side of aging when you don't have to deal with these issues, but by the same token, remember, yesterday is history. 
Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. And that's why we call it the present. Please enjoy your present by looking and living life with a bright side of aging. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Network Radio Show. Our mission is to interview successful entrepreneurs who are willing to share with us their ideas and experiences, both the successes and the failures. Because as it has been jokingly said, you should learn from the mistakes of others because you'll never live long enough to make them all yourself. My name is Ike Engelbaum. And I'm the founder of the Entrepreneurs Network of Michigan, which is a group of motivated people that are all interested in helping each other in achieving our personal and professional goals. Please check out our website, entrepreneursnetworkofmichigan.com, for meeting schedule as well as self-improvement material. Our philosophy is that if it's to be, it's up to me. Do you know someone who needs to see a dentist but is homebound? Dr. Mansour's Portable Dental Services provides dental treatment in the comfort of a person's home. Portable Dental Services administers all aspects of dental care. To make an appointment, call 586-873-5567. That's Portable Dental Services, 586-873-5567. Portable Dental Services, making smiles at home. And hopefully you will take advantage of having dental service right in your home among the other services that House Calls on Wheels offers. Our goal is to help you age gracefully in your home and uh, hopefully not have to go into a nursing home only unless you have to. And uh, I am really excited that, that on the phone line is a really dynamic human being who is uh, not only talented verbally, but he's also a great writer. His name is Eugene Greenstein, and uh, uh, he uh, is addressing something that we hear about almost on the hour in the news every day in regards to the humanitarian crisis in the Middle East. There's a movie that uh, he is uh, letting people know exists, and hopefully you can join us. Uh, it's going to be July the 24th at 7 o'clock, and it's free to attend. Is that right, Mr. Greenstein? Hello. That's correct, Ike. All right. Hi, how are you? Very good. Uh, you might take a minute or so and describe uh, your activities, not right from date of birth, but <laughs> you, <laughs> you're a pretty active guy. Uh, if someone asks you, uh, hey, what do you do? What do you tell them? <laughs> well, um, I do a lot of different things, but uh, relative to this event, I've been, I've been the, an activist uh, in the political community, primarily Israel activism. For the last 12 years, I was the past president of the local chapter of the Zionist Organization of America. And in that role, um, I, we're bringing along with a group of uh, the Cal, from the Chaldean community and the Jewish community uh, the film Faith Keepers, which is a 50-minute film that's a very powerful you know, documentary that puts a face and a voice to the humanitarian crisis and genocide of Christians and minorities in the Middle East. But it, it's a unique film also from the point of view that it, it covers the past hundred years of history and the various persecutions in the region, starting with the Chaldean, well, the Armenian, rather, and Assyrian genocide in 1915 with the Ottoman Turks and the uh, elimination of the Jewish community over time across the Middle East, uh, you know, ending in about the, the early 60s 
you know, with the establishment of Israel, etc., the Jewish community was no no longer whoops. Uh, it was no longer feasible to um, you know, stay in these countries because the, the community was basically thrown out. Hmm. And um, you know, the various uh, problems as the Christian community went from 20 percent of the Middle East in 1915 to 4 percent today, and obviously, what's going on with ISIS in Iraq and Syria you know, is of major concern. You know, we're seeing a genocide there. And I think the, the key issue is is that the community, uh, you know, we're far away. And, uh, you know, and when you're far away, you don't pay attention to detail. We don't put enough pressure on our government to deal with what's going on. And uh, so this movie does a great job of putting everything in context. We'll have a few speakers from the Clarion Project, the local community, to make it even more real. Um, you know, people really appreciate how, you know, what the significance of that problem is and how privileged we are here in the United States. Right, absolutely. Now, this is going to be held at the Shenandoah Country Club Ballroom which is right on Walnut 5600 Walnut Lake Road in West Bloomfield. And I'm really impressed with uh, knowing your background. Your phone doesn't stop ringing, does it? That uh, right. shows you how active you are. <laughs> now, the truth of it is that uh, we always hear this sort of distrust of the Israelis and the Palestinians and uh, the Chaldeans and all. Meanwhile, this movie really is going to be at the Shenandoah Country Club, and it reaches out to uh, the Armenian community, Assyrian, and uh, also the Americans who are not aware of uh, how mistreated a lot of these groups are. And uh, here we... You know, uh, most organizations, you start with a prayer and you look upon it in respect. And over there, uh, unfortunately, uh, those people that want to practice a Christian-based type uh, faith are, uh, are the ones that are getting the most discrimination. Now, the date again is July 24th at 7 o'clock. It's free to attend. If you'd like more uh, information, uh, by all means, feel free to uh, call our toll-free number, 888-489-8980. But Eugene, you might give out your direct number, if you don't mind, a couple of times. Well, this is a number that you can get some more information in. That's 248-661-6000. 248, and again, please. Six six one six thousand. All right. Well, very good. Please join me. I plan for sure to be there, July the twenty fourth at seven o'clock, Shenandoah Country Club, and uh, I know Eugene will even be glad to shake your hand and maybe autograph something for you. Is that right, Eugene? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be happy to do it. Anything, anything like that, whatever it takes to, uh, to educate the community and. Uh, you know, the, the people really need to understand the dynamics, which are totally, uh, you know, foreign to the perspective right. of of American of Americans. Right, we, we have right. no idea of what's going on. Right. Well, this is going to clear up a lot of doubt and hopefully get good information out. There's so much misinformation. The sad part is, is that uh, then a lot of things uh, get that much more complicated. So show up July 24th for free at 7 o'clock. I plan on being there. Gene is going to be there. That alone should drag you out there, okay? Right. <laughs> Thanks for being hey, on thank here. You. All right, we'll talk hey, soon. Thank I'll you very see, much. All right, and I'll see you Monday, if not uh, sooner. Right. Have a good one right now. We'll take a brief break, and we're going to be right back. Don't you go away. Okay. 
Do you know someone who needs to see a dentist but is homebound? Dr. Mansour's Portable Dental Services provides dental treatment in the comfort of a person's home. Portable Dental Services administers all aspects of dental care. To make an appointment, call 586-873-5567. That's Portable Dental Services, 586-873-5567. Portable Dental Services, making smiles at home. They're going to put me in the movies. They're going to make a big star out of me. We'll make a film about a man that's sad and lonely. And all I got to do is act naturally. Hey, all right. I you wonder you why would Ike Engelbaum start the Entrepreneurs Network of Michigan segment with being in the movies? I'll tell you why. We've got a movie uh, producer, director, action stunt choreographer, and writer by the name of Tom Henry. Yes, folks, this man has two first names. Is that right, Tom Henry? Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's terrific. When I grow up, I'm going to get two first names, <laughs> but I got about 60 years yet to go, so I'll okay. figure it out. And uh, a conventional name and fellow entrepreneur member, is he's got a regular type name and it's sort of actually showbiz sounding. Thomas Sachs. Is that your real name, Mr. Thomas Sachs? No, actually, my real name is Thomas Stark. <laughs> oh, Thomas. But, okay, oh, okay. Thomas it, Stark. I'm sorry. All right. But I do spell Tom with an H, so oh, I'm. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a little, <laughs> little different. T H O M. Yeah, right. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Now that we got the names straightened out, uh, you, uh, Thomas, are a uh, fellow member of our entrepreneur. Network Group, and I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow morning, and hopefully you'll bring your lovely wife, Susan, with you. Uh, you better not bring anybody else, I'll tell you that, okay? She, <laughs> she's, <laughs> uh, she's involved with you and uh, your business ventures, and uh, as you know, our meetings always start off with a 60-second elevator pitch. So pretend we're starting the meeting that tomorrow uh, at like at the Level One Bank, Big Beaver and Woodward, three seven thirty seven hundred uh, Woodward. It's right on the southeast corner of Big Beaver and Woodward. Very easy to find. Level One Bank is a very friendly atmosphere, and they got money there too. And if you work it the right way, they may give you a loan. And uh, we go from 9.15 to 11.30. Uh, uh, usually we have a chance to schmooze with one another, but if you can't make the full shot, uh, we sort of have a break up at uh, 10.30. So 9.15 to 10.30, come on out. Free donuts, free co coffee. We have great information. In fact, uh, Thomas Stark is, uh, is actually uh, uh, one of these people that is a typical entrepreneur. He is involved in more than one venture. So give us your 60-second elevator speech. <laughs> you know, uh, well, thank you, Ike, for inviting me to be here again. Mm -hmm. You know, I started out in the health and wellness industry, uh, so there's products that I represent with that. But one of the problems that we have in marketing is where's your next person going to come from? Who's the next person going to talk to? And so I developed uh, an interest in Internet marketing and how you build a presence, how you build a brand online. So what I like to say today is I help people build bars <laughs> online. And uh, BARS is an acronym for a brand. How do you build an audience? How do you build relationships or reciprocal communications? And then the fourth thing is sales. So B-A-R-S, how do you build bars online? I see, and if you do it successfully, you can actually have a real alcoholic drink, adult beverage, is that right? Uh, well, <laughs> but we're not going to go there, right? Well, not now. Maybe at 10 o'clock tonight, but who knows? So, so show up tomorrow and uh, have all the details and... Uh, uh, actually, the wonderful thing about having someone uh, with Thomas's uh, talents is that uh, if you're stuck on your existing web page, he's got some great ideas of how to get unstuck. And uh, actually, uh, Tom Henry, uh, who's a director and producer and, and action stunt choreographer and writer, 
probably uh, could tap into some of your stuff. Is that right? <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I, I'm, I'm anxious to hear more about what Tom's movie is about. So. Yeah, right. Well, uh, it's, so first of all, let's uh, get a little background. I understand, uh, Tom, that uh, you've produced and directed two independent films already, is that right? Yes. Uh, so tell me what's behind this uh, movie that you're in the process of making it happen. What's the plot? Okay, well, first of all, thank you, Ike, for having me on this morning. And uh, the plot of this movie is about an energy drink, and it's about this energy drink that uh, that's actually killing people. And the, the, the plot is, what I'm, the word I'm trying to get out is that, you know, you can't, you can't uh, sit back and, and, and think that everything is good for you. There's mm -hmm. always a price to pay. Mm -hmm. And this is what this film is basically about, letting the people know that just because there's this new energy drink on the market that can give you this superb energy, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that it's always good for you. There's always a price to pay in the end. And that's the word I'm trying to get out in this film. And uh, your timing couldn't be better. and. Uh uh, the truth of it is that uh, being, uh, as many folks that listen to the program know, I'm a pharmacist and uh, we're always thinking of uh, narcotic drugs and prescription drugs and the misuse of them. The truth of it is there are a lot of non-prescription drugs like these energy drinks yes. that have a real faulty way of being put together. So at the end mm -hmm. of the film, you'll see in a dramatic way of... Uh, what can go wrong and what uh, the way that it can possibly make a difference in a positive way. And uh, uh, you were saying uh, that you are actually uh, considering not only having investors, but people that might be interested in getting their face in front of a camera. You welcome that opportunity as well. Is that correct? Yes, sir. yes, I do. We uh, need uh, we need plenty of extras. Okay. Well, I. Uh, I'm pleased to announce that I'll be in that film, uh, unless you edit me out of the film. That's the only problem. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in there. Okay, okay. Because I uh, enjoy the experience. And I'll tell you, folks, uh, especially if you're an entrepreneur, uh, the more interesting uh, type of credentials you can have in your resume, the more successful you'll be. And uh, you could honestly say afterward, uh, after you're in the movie, hey, I've been in the movie and I'm doing all this other stuff. And Mr. Thomas, you might be able to get them on the Internet with that stuff too, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That would be awesome. And uh, but. Yeah, it would be awesome. Yeah, I'd be love to. And, and, and I, I have secured a spot as an extra. <laughs> yes, you, all right. All right. So. See, all you got to do, this is why uh, entrepreneurship in America is so great. All you got to do is ask and talk to the right people, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what we do at our Thursday morning meetings out at Level One Bank I'll in be Bluefield. There. All right. That's great. And uh, the nice thing about it is, is that uh, you really have a good, better appreciation of uh, how movies are put together, and it's a fun experience. Now, from the financial standpoint, Mr. Tom Henry, uh, I understand you're looking for around $75,000 as far as investors. Is that correct? Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, let's say someone, you know, uh, in fact, uh, it's exciting. You know, they always say when you invest, invest in something that you at least feel part of the whole investment. In this case... Uh, the movie has got a great potential. You could possibly get 10% rate of return. And the truth of it is, is that uh, you've already got uh, some interesting uh, connections. Imagine Theater, you said, uh, was yes. uh, going to be a venue. And now let's face it. Tell me anybody out there that uh, is... Uh, involved in our daily activities is affected in some way with either drug addiction or dependency and likewise uh, people want to be macho and show their muscles off get involved with these energy drinks and there's a lot behind there that yes, people are not aware and that's a that's going to be part of the movie is that yes, correct yes it is because a, a lot of people are so everybody want the quick fix now 
-hmm. and and they don't want to do the the hard work that's involved to get what you're looking for. Everybody want that quick fix, and they they all don't realize there's always a price to pay in the end. Right. Always. Right. Now you have a, a website, is that correct? Yes. Uh, and uh, what is the website? The website is www.dragonpicture.net. Dragonpicture.net, and uh, also you uh, have tied in. This is a typical uh, type of uh, program that I always try to promote to entrepreneurs. You've taken two of your talents. Your uh, Involved actually in martial arts, is that correct? Yeah, 45 yeah. years now. 45. So here uh, you've taken the martial arts part of your talents and combined it into an action movie yes. about action drinks. <laughs> yep. Is that right? And, and basically, what I do is I, I hold these seminars uh, once a year where I, I actually I call it the action film stunt camp, where I teach actors uh, how to perform action scenes in front of the camera, how it works, mm. and uh, you know, the, how to sell a punch, how to sell a kick, and how to sell a fall. Wow. And, and uh, uh, you know, I let them know how important the camera angle is. You know, the camera angles are also how important facial expressions are. Right. They, people don't realize how important facial expressions are. Even when you're shooting a gun, you got to have that facial expression. Mm -hmm. you know. So you've combined those talents, and, and uh, you actually can instruct somebody who wants to consider going into the movie production business. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Well, that's wonderful. I mean, how much better uh, situation you could be in the movie, be an investor. You can be both or all, all of it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if anyone wants to get a hold of you, do you have a phone number you'd like to give out? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 313. Three one three seven three nine seven three nine five six eight nine. Okay, uh, to repeat, it's three one three seven three nine five six eight nine. So if anyone is interested, uh, uh, you can have them go, come down, and I'm going to be involved in it. So I've had the experience, uh, and it's really fun uh, to suddenly uh, not just watch a movie but actually be in the movie and mm -hmm. you want to invest in it and if you got that bug to be part of showbiz <laughs> what better way could you have it than being in the movie acting in the movie and then afterward uh, not only imagine theater but you're planning on rolling this out on a national and maybe even international basis yes is that correct that's right right yeah. well you know uh, i'm not uh, you know, trying to steer you away from whatever investments <coughs> that you have, and obviously, uh, this is not something that uh, is as safe as a CD. But uh, how much money do you make on a CD? <laughs> and if you really want to get frustrated, look at your bank statement and see that you make <laughs> a magnificent point zero zero one or something like right. that. <laughs> I've got more 13 cents per month than I can keep track of from the bank. <laughs> Here, it's, uh, you know, you got to have the right attitude. You, can, you invest in something that you have a passion for, and uh, you, the movie actually uh, uh, is a fun thing to put together. And uh, you uh, not only... Uh, uh, can teach people in getting into showbiz, so to speak, but into martial arts as well. Yes. Is it the same number? Is that how you mm -hmm. you work it? <clears throat> and uh, there are a lot of people out there that are sort of action oriented. Wouldn't it be fun uh, if you're that type of individual that you can actually learn how to throw a punch and have a camera in front of you? Is that mm -hmm. correct? <laughs> yep, that's right. Now, uh, you got a, quite an impressive background uh, to bring you to this point. Do you want to share that with us? Yes, I had. Uh, I graduated from John Robert Powers uh, Acting School back in 1987, and. Um, I went to this action film stunt camp back in 1990, and and it was it was funny because I found out that they were basically teaching everything that we were actually practicing back in the 70s. Because back in the 70s, we were we had started practicing the the uh, the, the moves for for film, and practicing practicing the the stunts and everything, and we we had these cameras that 
that only took 50 feet of film back then. You know, they, it was the uh, super miller, super eight millimeter cameras, and mm -hmm. uh, so we basically took that and learned from that. And when I went to the stunt camp down in Boston, Massachusetts, they were basically doing what we were already doing back in the 70s. So I said, okay, I can do mm -hmm. this. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. so uh, we, we went from there, and, and then I started making contacts, and, and uh, that's what got me to where I'm at today. And I started, you know, meeting other people, and I, I started teaching them. As a matter of fact, my first independent film, there were only two people in the film that were actually actors. Everybody else were new to the game. So I had to not only teach them how to fight, I had to teach them how to act as well. But I enjoyed it, yeah. and I pulled it off. Well, they say if uh, one of the keys uh, to success is finding something that you really enjoy doing and figuring out a way on how to make money at it. Mm -hmm. And I, if, I, if I may say one more thing. Sure. I, 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 tell, I tell people all the time, you know, as far as acting, when they tell me, oh, I, I've never acted before, I say, yes, you have. I say, when you talk to your friends uh, or, to your, or to your family, you're acting. Yes. Do the same thing. Be natural. Yes. You know, yes. Yeah, that, right. Everybody's yeah. an actor. I, yeah. I tell them that all the time. Yes. Well, mm -hmm. uh, one of the greatest lines along that point is uh, whether you liked Ronald Reagan or not, uh, uh, he certainly was a great communicator. And uh, as you know, uh, he yes, was, was an actor. He was governor of California. Mm -hmm. And then when he was running for president, I'll never forget. Uh, he was asked by a reporter, uh, Mr. Reagan, you're running for president of the United States. You, aside from being a governor, you've never really been involved in government uh, type of uh, jurisdictions, and all your background is uh, as an actor. He says, well, aren't all presidents actors? <laughs> 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 fast forward, to, mm -hmm. fast forward to 2017, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so here, who knows? You go with Tom Henry and <laughs> be an extra in this movie. If you want to be an investor, he'd welcome the opportunity. But you could be possibly the next president of the United States. Right. Wow, who knows? Right. <laughs> well, you got to start somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And the uh, nice thing about it is, is that. Uh, you have these uh, sessions uh, at times where people can still have a full-time job and still come out. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, and basically, what I do, I I I, I set the um, I set up the uh, the scenes according to the people's jobs. You know, I ask them, what days are you available? Uh, you know, what days are you? I, I always said if they have a scene coming up, I'll, I'll ask them what day they can actually do the scene on, so it won't interfere with their time. With their and, time, right. Yeah. Okay, well, listen, that, that's fantastic, and there are a lot of people out there. Uh, you know, I go to many of these uh, uh, playhouses uh, where you've got some really talented people get on stage, and they'll be in a small little community on the stage. Here you can go big time. You get into this movie, you can be, uh, you can uh, go to places like Imagine Theater, hopefully more and more movies, and say, hey, there I am. <laughs> right? So you can be, yep. uh, so they, uh, it's wonderful, and the uh, nice thing about it is, is that uh, you've got roles for pretty well almost any type of personality. Well, that's great. Now, we could talk for hours, but unfortunately, we only have about one minute, and I usually like to wrap up the program on entrepreneurship with one of my favorite lines, which is, if you really want to get anything done in life, you'll find a way. And if you don't, you'll find an excuse. And there is no excuse for not achieving your dreams and goals in America, because it is the greatest country in the whole world. Remember, a goal is just a dream with a deadline.
WNZK has available a few good hours of airtime for a few good programs to serve their communities. Radio is better than ever in targeting an audience that listens to what you say. Learn more about this exciting radio broadcasting opportunity by calling WNZK Radio at 248-557-3500. We are WNZK, Dearborn.